Hello, John. How are you today? Good. How are you, Nolan? Good, Good morning. And welcome to all of you who are watching this live and who are joining us later for repeat watch. And if you're on YouTube, we would love if you would subscribe to our channel. Uh, yes. We're doing weekly Q and A's. If you have any questions, you can do it in our live chat, comment later, or email us at <laughs> redworship.com. So we've got yes. some exciting stuff to talk about today. And um, John, how's your team looking these days? Seems looking good. I, you know, I've always said, you know, we've we've had. Um, you know, success is measured in so many different ways. So it's it's tricky to even say we've had a lot of success in in worship, but we've had um, great growth and development over the years, and I've loved it, loved being a part of it. And for me, as a, one of the leaders of our team, um, it's always I've always just said it's it's been great because of the people we have. Like we have some great musicians, some great leaders, and they make me look good at the end of the day. Like we just have great people. And it's like, man, it's just so easy and fun to, to get to lead worship every week and dream about technology, dream about different music. If we hear a song on the radio, pass it around. Like, Hey, what do we think about this one? And just kind of do church and, and worship leading together as a team. How about you? How are things looking for you? Oh man, it's killer. <laughs> And I would say that um, your success, your outreach, um, your the quality um, that your worship is in person, um, online, is directly related to the team that you have around you. Yeah, I think that so many churches who are reaching out, they'll ask questions like, um, "How do we do this?" or um, "What's the next step?" And our first question is. Who's going to be on the Zoom with you? Who's going to be in the meeting with you? Who's invested in this? Who are you working with? Um, and many, many times the answer is, oh, it's just me. And right. that is often um, a huge indicator of where you're, you are going. Uh, we had a, a call with a church last Friday and um, didn't really know who was going to be on. We thought a couple of his people and, and it was a Zoom of like 10 people. Yeah that this church um, is going places. So shout out to Pastor Noah. That was so exciting. Yeah. And they were all as invested. They were all as engaged. They were all as passionate as the lead pastor. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think with this, and it's the same with our staff, like every single one of us is going in the same direction and we're super excited. And then you look at our worship team. Um, last night, John and I recorded a night of worship that's going um, live on the interwebs, um, March 19th. So write that down. Um, but we had a room full of musicians, a room full of tech. Um, and um, it just like all of them being more talented than than myself. Um, and it's it's going to be amazing. And uh, we even had somebody who um, was there for just to, to see what we were up to. And he ended up running the, the visuals for us. And yeah. that's really what's exciting about what we're doing and what we're talking about is that um, when, when you have the right people around you, when you have the right energy around you, um, people are going to be attracted to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, John, I know you had a, a story you wanted to share on this, but um, yeah. what does that look like for you? What's your philosophy? Well, I think of when I met you, Nolan, like I think about like we, you know, it was early on in the process here and, and you came and visited and we just started kind of chatting and, and then we, we started jamming together and then he came to rehearsal and it was just this whole thing. I had a moment as a leader where I'm like, this dude is talented and I can either keep like trying to like build this program and like, you know, you know, try to control it or I can let Nolan just run and do what he does and have fun with it and be passionate about it and kind of give up control, like let go where the direction is going. Um, and obviously there's trust in that. Like I had to trust you to know like, hey, this guy is gonna fall through. He's gonna do what he needs to do to build what he feels called to build in as part of this team, as a member of this team. And I had to just have a real look in the mirror and go, this isn't my call is not to control this thing. 
my call is to like grow this thing and build this thing and, and to try to keep it, you know, on the tracks maybe, but how do I like let Nolan just run with this thing? So that was a big like learning moment for me. And it took a while. It wasn't an overnight thing. I think it hit me overnight where I'm like, Oh man, like this guy's great. He's very talented. And, and I think there's a whole nother lesson in there too, where it was kind of intimidating, you know, cause I didn't know you yet. Like we were just kind of, we hit it off. We we're buddies already, but it was still, we were trying to figure out some things. And, and so like, for me, I had to go, all right, this guy's really talented instead of being intimidated and trying to, again, to control it. But, you know, I think it just rises the tides, right? I think there's a, there's a thing there where suddenly like there's improvement happening and you just rise to the occasion instead of like controlling it and limiting it. Um, I like that. Um, and I'm not, I'm going to butcher the quote, but where um, all of the ships will rise with the tide. Right. You have, to have your ship in the water, right? Right. Um, and I, I, thinking about a couple things, some leadership principles in there is like with control. I know like I'm a, I definitely a controlling um, personality. Don't ask my wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but, Nolan actually told me to tell this story. He's like, yeah. talk about how good I was. You know, I'm not just <laughs> um, and, and it's like, I always had this vision with control and I I'm working on this you know a lot of the things that we're we talk about on these videos it's not like we have it perfected it's this these are things that we are dealing with and have been dealing with, with for so long that we know how important it is to the success of um, your ministry but um, one of the things is like if you try and hold sand in your hands mm. right, you grip it like this the sand's going to fall through yeah. right if you hold it in an open palm that that sand's going to to stay in your hand right and that's how wow. control is um <clears throat> and another thing that i was thinking about um just as how it looks like do you want to be the person who's doing 100 percent of the things or do you want to have 100 people who are doing 100 percent of the thing or one percent of the things right right uh, and and the success on that and it doesn't have to be 100 people i'm not saying if you're don't have 100 people on your team you're gonna be you're gonna fail um but really like you if you can do you, i don't remember what book it is i don't remember what the percentage is but if you can find somebody who can do something take something off your plate who can do i think it's 80 percent as well as you can mm -hmm. that's when you need to give it away yeah right um and um so and i think as a controlling person as a leader in our in our churches in our community it's like if they don't do it as good or better Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give it away and that you can't just can't do that it that 70 80 percent they're going to learn and grow with you um and there's yeah. a guy who came and did lighting for us and has been doing some audio with us and he just he just came to hang out um in December and now he's he's <laughs> at the initiative and now he's teaching me how to do things at first it was like here's how you do some of the lights here's all the the soundboard works and now he's like did you know if you do this this and this this is going to happen and now he's teaching other people on our team yeah. uh, so shout out to chris on that but yeah he taught one of our guys you know we, yeah. we came down and helped you out yesterday and and we had one of our techs there and afterwards he came up to me and he's like man i just learned like three things from this guy who's never really done this before like that was awesome and i was like yeah that's what it's all about and that wouldn't happen again if like john said if i if i didn't have the vulnerability to let something mm -hmm. go um yeah, right so yeah i think the key in it, the key of it all is or go ahead go ahead no no you you go ahead oh i was just gonna say that the key of it all is just taking a look in the mirror and going all right what things am i trying to control here because i either have trouble trusting or i have trouble letting things go and, and just kind of letting god do what he's doing with the situation um and then there's gonna be failures i mean like letting 80%, there's still that 20% that's going to flop. Like something's going to go wrong. Even when it's just you doing it, things go wrong. It's just how it goes. And so just knowing that that's just part of the deal is, is kind of failing through it. Um, you know, I've, I've like, I've had so many stories now about parenting where I'm like, Abe, you're going to fall off the couch, man. Like, don't like, what are you doing? You know, cause I can see it. I've been in that situation. I've fallen off a couch before. Like I know it's going to happen. 
But for him, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know what falling off a couch is yet. So like having it ha- and not setting up to fail, but like it's going to happen where suddenly he falls off the couch and goes, oh, that's what you meant by that. You know, like, okay, you know, and obviously, you know, it's, it's a different, you know, you can't compare, you know, volunteer technicians to a toddler, but, you know, there are the similar moments of, okay, like I got to let him fail and I got to let him just do his thing to figure it out. It's, uh, I'm preaching a little bit next week on failure um, and how God works through our failures. And um, there's a stat I read in a, a book by Vishen Lakiani. And he talks how Google, which everybody who watches this knows what Google is, right? But they, um, they factor in 40% failure rate. And if mm-hmm. you are not failing 40% of the time, you aren't working hard enough. You're not thinking big enough. And so the whole idea of failure not being a good thing, um, I think is where we are like, we can't fail. We've got to stay away from this. But really, if you're not, you're not thinking big enough. Right. A mindset shift for all of us. I know that um, being a perfectionist too, like I don't want to fail. That makes me feel insecure. But really, that just means I'm not thinking big enough. I need right. to push myself to break through those barriers so that I am failing so that I have that learning curve after it. Right, right. Um, And I think as, you know, your team lead, you know, in the worship setting, like you have to figure, figure those things out as you go. Like it's it's not a one size fits all, like this person's passionate. I'm going to let them run with it. Like, nope, you have to kind of, you know, figure that process out as you go. Okay. How much do I need to walk alongside this person? Is this person the right fit? Ultimately, even though they're fired up, they're passionate. Is this the right seat the bus? Nope. We should probably move them over to this. You know, they're fired up. We want that passion somewhere, but where at, how do we, how do we go about doing that? Um, and, and so the second thing we we're going to talk about today, um, and I'll, I'll kind of steer it this way, John, is um, you let, so you were talking about how you had to let go of some of that for me to take it. But even before that happened, I had to be attracted to you mm-hmm your ministry at that time um and so let's open it up that way john um i had been i had just moved to fargo um i had been involved in church working at several different churches in in hayes and beulah where i grew up in grand forks um was at three different churches doing ministry um for several years and then i got to fargo and i was shopping i was looking and i was desperate to find a church um so i go um when i had breaks in the day i'd go and check out different churches and i was i was hungry but i could not find um a church that i liked and so what attracted to me to john um besides um his good looks (laughs) yeah oh my god (laughs) is uh, (laughs) like he was a leader it wasn't just, well, we're trying to do these things that I knew that he had been working on his craft and he was working on his leadership skills. He was working on being a better human being. Um, so it's kind of those both sides is, is um, yeah, I don't want to go in there. I want to talk yeah. about leadership. Like, what is it to you that attracts you to different people? What is it? Right. Leader? Right. Yeah, just looking at yourself in the mirror again and going, would I want to work with myself? You know, I read there was a book where the guy said, ask your team members individually, like, um, you know, do you enjoy working with me? Like, what are the hardest parts about working with me? And being like very vulnerable and not like, what, you don't like working with me, you know, but like, hey, what are the things that make it tough? You know, like, and just having those honest conversations and going, okay, I need to improve X, Y, and Z. And, and obviously you don't want to put your team on the spot necessarily. And it might just be a few trusted people on your team that you kind of have that conversation with and just say, what's it like to be on the other side of the table from me? Like, what is it, what does it feel like? Is it open? Is it welcoming? Like, how does it feel? And then just being real with yourself about it. Okay, things aren't working. Why? You know, or why do I not seem to be developing and growing relationships with uh, musicians, with with tech people, whatever it is specifically in worship? But why are these things so hard? Maybe I'm stuck and not, you know, and I'm not a very welcoming and inclusive leader. Maybe you know, and it's just really kind of 
asking some of those hard questions of yourself as a leader. Yeah, I think um, to have an attractive ministry, you have to be an attractive leader. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge thing. It, again, I don't have it put together, but goodness, am I working on it? And something that was um, was and still is um, attractive about working with um, with John is that like he is constantly working on his craft and he's constantly working on himself. Um, and I think that in Christianity and churches, like we're all about having it put together, knowing all the right answers. And I think so much that's, that is a put off for so many people. Like we need to continue to dive into our relationship with God. We need to continually be working on um, leaderships and reading books on leadership and podcasts mm -hmm. and um, working on those things. And that's, that's why John and I work so well together is because we know we're like, we're doing so well, but we haven't even gotten started as far as development in ourselves and in our craft. Right. Right. Um, and, and that, that get, that's attractive. Like, are you a church that's been doing the same thing forever? Um, that might not be attractive. Um, we didn't have a huge team when I started here, but we started implementing the steps that we've been talking about in our question and answers that we've been, uh, that we have um, in our free resource page um, that John will link to a little later. Um, you know, we started implementing these things and started getting better and better. And then we would have people, we have people coming after, up to me after church, like, how can I get involved? Yeah. Right. And so it's one of those chicken before the egg questions, but, mm. um, but you aren't going to be, have people like begging to be part of your ministry if you aren't working on making a better ministry and then one mm -hmm. person comes and then it gets better yet and then another two people come because of that right mm -hmm. um so it all starts with you your relationship with god and your relationship with yourself to start making those implementations of um, what you're doing in worship and how you're um, leading yourself right and just humbling yourself down and surrounding yourself with people who are just better than you, you know, like I could, have, again, I think about when you came in, I could have been intimidated and shut down and like put you in a role. And that was all you did. And, or it was going, Nope, we're going to, we, I need to continue to surround myself with Nolan Weiss's with Eric Addington's with Matt and Like we've just been blessed with just great people. And all of those people all together have just risen that tide over the years um, and obviously, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not where we want to be, but we're well on our way and it's been, and it feels good. It's been healthy. It's been, you know, we're in a good situation. And I think that all really helps. It's uh, and that's, a, this is another leadership principle. Like if you are the, if you are the most talented, the, the best leader in your group that you are surrounding yourself with, you need to try harder. Yeah. Uh, I'll be the first person to admit that I am the least talented member of the team that we have. Right. That's Same right. here. Yep. Team, um, is because of, um, because of who I surround myself, we're just going to continue to right. grow. Um, and, and it's one of those things, like if I'm the best person around me, I don't want to do better. Mm -hmm. if I see the people around me who are excelling at, in their lives and excelling in music. I'm going to push myself so that I continue to grow. Right. That's the same thing with finances. That's the same thing with anything in leadership, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm the best, I'm not going to want to be better. But having people right. who are constantly pushing me um, and, and we're going to rise together. Right. Right. So, um, a lot of little nuggets in our, our ramblings here today. Um, yeah. No, this is all good stuff. And I think it's stuff that we just don't think about often enough. Um, we have this conversation a lot, but like how often are you and I having those moments of, okay, I need to, I need to work on this. Like I, I need to just buckle down and take this seriously. Listen to a podcast a day, read, read a chapter of a book a day, like whatever it is to just get in those good habits of development. And we slip all the time. Like we, we don't, I don't always do that. And there's weeks where I'm like, Oh, I didn't read anything this week. Like I need to do this better. And, um, and just being real about it. Yeah. Well, awesome. We'll uh, continue to add leadership things, um, leadership tips, nuggets, things that we've learned 
Um, yeah. In, in future Q and A's, we'll um, continue to post them because they have literally changed my life. Right. Uh, and all the same for you too, John. Yeah. But uh, thanks for joining us today. Make yeah. sure you your questions and we will do our best to provide answers. Uh, you have a blessed day. Sounds good. Thanks, Nolan. Bye, John. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.